Good morning. So today, I'm struggling. It appears that God has pruned my life. I hurt my back and tennis is cut out of my life, at least for a while. And I like playing, but I can't. I've had to cut it out. So why has my loving Father deemed it best for my fruitfulness to do that, uh, to allow that? Uh, what does he want to replace it with? Uh, is there something new he wants me to do with that time? Uh, new people I'm to be with, a new assignment for me. I mean, my life is his, and he can do whatever he wants to do with it. That was the agreement. He is Lord. So although the cutting hurts physically and emotionally, I'm actually getting okay with it. I have grace because I'm trusting that good fruit, more fruit, will come from my life because God has pruned it. Now, honestly, it's not that painful. Uh, come on, I know a lot of people who have had far more serious things cut out of their lives. And I've seen where the pruning was good, that as good fruit came from it, even though it was painful at the time and may still be painful. But it is our faith journey to understand God's ways and his purposes for pruning. And as Jesus explained from our John 15 teaching passage from Sunday, uh, not only is he the true vine, the source of our lives, eternal and here on earth, but God the Father is the vine dresser. Now, what does the vine dresser do? Two things. First, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. The vine dresser examines each branch to determine if it is properly attached, or is it only attached externally through accretion? Uh, so it looks like a fruit-bearing branch, but it isn't and never will be because it's not attached inwardly to the vine. Hence, it will not receive the sap from the vine and therefore will never bear fruit. So once the vine dresser is confident that the branch is not properly attached, he merely breaks it off and throws it away. Not even its flimsy wood is good for anything, so he burns it. And that's a picture of an unbeliever who, like Judas, was identified with Jesus, but he never belonged to him because he didn't believe in him, which is why he allowed Satan to fill his heart and empower him to betray Jesus. So. That's the fate of all unbelievers. They will be removed and thrown into the fire. Next, Jesus says, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So the vine dresser sees a legitimate branch that is properly attached to the vine, and he knows that because he sees fruit. But what happens to the branch is that it grows long, but it only has one shoot so it will produce minimal fruit. What he wisely does is to prune it, cut off the end of it, so that in time it will produce multiple shoots and each one will bear fruit. Got that? He prunes it to make it far more fruitful. And the pruning of our lives is crucial to our fruitfulness. So at some point, God, the perfect and wise vine dresser, will cut things off cut things out of our lives. And yes, it will likely hurt for a time, but in time, as we abide in Christ, we will grow more fruit, we will bear more fruit than we would have if he had let us alone. As I shared in Sunday's passage, uh, God may cut people out of our lives to direct us to other people. He might cut, might cut a job or a hobby or even a ministry to direct us to another job or hobby or ministry or more of them. But the cutting in time will be, make us far more fruitful than if we had not been pruned. So beloved, remember that when we experience loss, that may be God's pruning. And rather than resenting it, we need to pray and discern how Father wants to replace what was taken away with something that will make us more fruitful. I encourage you to consider your journey, past or present, to discern where God has or is pruning you. And if you've resisted or resented 
resented it. Stop. Don't resist the Lord's pruning in you and don't resent him for it. Love him. Trust him. Abide in Jesus today. Even right now, draw near to him. Let him flow in you and through you that today you will bear much fruit, proving yourself to be his disciple and bringing him greater glory. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for loving us and overseeing our lives. Thank you for pruning us so that we might bear more fruit. And today we will trust you to do what is best for us. We love you, Lord. And now offer your prayers. God bless you.